I don't cook, I don't clean. Then leave. Then leave. I hate when people say women belong in the kitchen. Because how am I supposed to clean the rest of the house? Did you guys know that I don't have a driver's license? It's not like there's a road from the washer to the dryer. Doing laundry for my family of 25 is one of the loads of blessings that I get to experience each and every week. I've been seeing a lot of you tumble in the comments. And just because some of you know what's right in the world and others of you don't, does not mean the fighting is okay. Let's keep it clean. I've been having bad mom guilt for introducing my kids to worldly tech like washers and dryers. My dryer even plays a jingle once it's done and it is secular music. Can my trad mamas in the comments let me know if I should go back to clothesline dry or not? If this is a sin, I sure hope the Lord can wash it away. What am I not understanding about Ballerina Farm and Nara Smith becoming the face of like the resurgence of trad wife culture? Those are unbelievably successful working women. And what you are observing is their work. What do you think a trad wife is? Like they have children that they love and care for, but like a cook? It's like it's like calling Rachel Ray a trad wife because she has a cooking show. Especially Nara Smith, she's like always talking about her and her husband how they split childcare. Like that is not trad wife. I don't want to look cute. I want to look like a hoe. Like what's going on here? Oh, I look adorable. It's making me sick. <laughs> Is it just you and me in the wreckage of the world? That must be so it's a naive sort of feminism that insists that women prove their ability to do all the things that men do. This is a distortion and a travesty. Men have never sought to prove that they can do all the things women do. Why subject women to purely masculine criteria? Women can and ought to be judged by the criteria of femininity, for it is in their femininity that they participate in the human race. And femininity has its limitations. So has masculinity. Women are not meant to work these nine to five corporate desk jobs. This trad wife is slowly becoming the most hated TikTok influencer. Ladies, let's wear clothes. Let's dress like women. This is Esty Williams and she has all the internet ready to pounce. She's one of the pioneers of the trad wife movement, which inspires women to go back into the home and uphold the traditional gender roles. She's known for her specific style, as she's always dressed as a pinup girl from the 1950s, perfectly encapsulating what it means to be a traditional homemaker. And I'm gonna make pumpkin bread, so make it with me, featuring my Marilyn Monroe dress. As such, Esty cooks and cleans for her husband, Connor, and always presents herself as the perfect wife, which he can be proud to have. And in return for looking after him and the family, Connor is the breadwinner, which means he's the only one that works and brings money home. In fact, Esty used to be a very normal college girl who was pursuing a degree in meteorology, but decided to drop out when she got married. However, when I decide I want to drop out of college and become a traditional wife, and my only goal in life is to be an amazing wife and mother, that's when eyebrows seem to raise. But she didn't care what everybody thought. She became devoted to her husband and turned into a housewife straight out of a 1950s magazine. And soon after rose to internet fame when she began posting how she spends her days on her TikTok account. She's always been very vocal about her beliefs and preaches that every woman should strive to be as feminine as possible and submit to her husband in every way possible. Exactly that is what angers the masses. In fact, many believe that Esty's lifestyle is very problematic and can even be extremely damaging. Let's take a look at an example. To purposely go in your closet and pick a pair of leggings, knowing you have other pants and other outfits, and to choose that as your whole day's attire. Ladies, let's wear clothes. Let's dress like women. In this TikTok video, the 25-year-old trad wife goes on to shame women for dressing trendy, calling them unladylike, and saying they aren't real clothes. So fathers, don't let your daughters dress like this just because it makes them happy and everybody else is doing it. Set standards for your daughter. This video wasn't received well in the slightest. 
Her viewers were in a rage saying that everyone should be dressing however they are most comfortable. They're saying her views are extremely toxic, pushing an anti-feminist narrative that women of today are fighting so hard against. They're also not pleased to know that Esty actively promotes the idea that women should submit to their husbands. The idea that subscribing to this kind of view of yourself as a woman and also of other women to pretend like that has no side effects, to pretend like it's not a ripe situation for abuse is ignorant at best and deceitful at worst. And although Esty says her lifestyle should be a choice and that she supports any woman who wants to work, she also said that as a woman, your top priority should be a wife and a mother. Which leaves us wondering, does she really back all women regardless of their life choices or is her support reserved for only the ones that share her views? Yo, the fact that she went to college is suspect, but I'll give her the benefit of the doubt, since it seems like she's actually domesticated. If she slept around, there would be no way she'd be able to stay at home and be a happy, serving one man. And despite being trad, I'm pretty sure some of her motivation to be an influencer is to troll feminists. Females are petty. No matter how classy they may be, they'll do something on purpose if they know it will annoy their enemies. And I'm here for it. Keep on posting, Queen, about making your man happy to trigger these no man having bed wenches. Also, did you notice her husband? He looks like he works out, and that's why a woman her quality committed to him. You can't expect these women who are attractive and traditional minded to dedicate their life to you if you're out of shape and barely have a job. You gotta hit the gym hard and get some size and definition, and you need to at least be working a blue collar union job. There is a shortage of workers, and many baby boomers are retiring. If you're working a dead-end job, learn a trade. Before we go further with the video, let me share the comment of the day. Shout out to J1 who shared, Remember when a woman was worth waiting for? Me neither. Yeah, you know, it's been a long time since it's been worth waiting for a woman. And I don't see it becoming worth anytime soon. So thanks for the comment, and please, don't forget to reach out to my email to claim your $5. As always guys, I'll pick one comment from each video. Could be the funniest, the most liked, or one that moved me, so don't forget to leave a comment, and you could be our winner tomorrow. So be sure to hit that like and sub button too, as the support helps out the channel so much, y'all. So now, let's get right back into the video. Embrace your masculinity. The most liked comment says, If she's happy, if her husband is happy, I don't see the problem. People sit and watch the Kardashians but think this woman is the problem. Haters gonna hate. Kudos to her. The feminists praise the Kardashians for promoting so-called body positivity, even though getting surgeries and photoshopping every picture is nothing positive about their body. It's saying they hate their body. I guess because Kim Kardashian got a Brazilian butt lift and looks like an ant woman now, that supposedly promotes body positivity. Kim got famous for posting an X-rated tape with a man named Ray Ray, I shit you not. These jokes write themselves. Didn't hear the feminists complaining that it promoted women as SEX objects, and it influenced so many females to become trashy and make their own explicit videos to try to become D-list celebrities. Yet, barely any complaints from the feminist. Another comment. Connor hit the lotto, damn it. Connor, her husband, improved his luck by building a physique and working a blue collar job. You too can get the same results as him, if you do the same and become a passport bro. I hate repeating this, but that's the best advice I can give you. Women are just jealous of her, because she's beautiful and loves her husband. Bingo, because she's loved by a man she respects, and she's not stressing every day about a job, student loans, bills, and so on, which ages people in dog years, especially females. This is why on average, stay-at-home moms look better than feminists. Basic Utah girl check. Put a finger down if you have blonde hair, you have a flavored soda addiction, you own a Stanley Tumblr, you're a Chick-fil-A lover, you've dated a summer sales bro, you have straight ends on your curled hair, you've gotten a boob job, you have a Vasa gym membership, you have microbladed eyebrows, you are married between the ages of 18 and 20. I wouldn't support getting married to an American woman, but am I the only one who thinks Utah might have the wife-ready women in America? This pretty lady just said she, like many like her, got married around 20. Oh, she's Mormon. 
because she has a Mormon hashtag under the video. That's gotta make sense. Well, damn, if you want to marry these women, you're gonna have to become a Mormon. Or I mean Mormon. If you live in Utah, let us know about these Mormon women, please. Here's what my husband eats in a day. For breakfast, he has scrambled eggs with cheese, bacon, cinnamon roll French toast roll-ups with maple syrup and orange juice, and this may be his favorite French toast roll-ups that I've made so far. In his smoothie, there's coconut water, frozen blueberries, frozen cauliflower, beets, and protein powder. For lunch, he had Korean-style ground turkey lettuce wraps with rice, kale Caesar salad with salmon, and he's also taking some fruits with him. Here we have pineapple, strawberries, and there's palm seeds at the bottom. For dinner, we had chicken thighs with 40 cloves of garlic, mashed potatoes, and Brussels sprouts. For dessert, we had Oreos milkshake. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. Bye. Who wouldn't want to be married to a lady like that? The right woman can definitely make your life heaven. I'd never want to go out to eat with her making my food. This is what feminism has robbed us men of. Home-cooked meals that would make us look forward to coming home. A female admitted in a comment, Lucky man. A modern woman comments, If this is what I should be cooking for my husband, it makes sense why we don't get along. That's probably one of the many reasons why they don't get along. She's probably a headache, getting fat, a feminist, and withholds SEX. And this just proves these females purposefully destroy relationships. And in case if you didn't think she actually cooked his meals. Hi guys, here's what my husband is having for lunch today. Actually, this is his post-workout meal. He's going to have some rice, some grilled asparagus, some chicken teriyaki meatballs, some cherries, a boiled egg, and some teriyaki sauce on the side. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. Bye! His post-workout meal is better than what most men get for dinner. And what does this also mean? Her husband earned and is earning her every day by being muscular. Working out can improve your SMW several notches because it adds to the masculine appeal. Just like a fit, in-shape woman is attractive to men, a man with muscles is attractive to men. She also cooks her kids' meals from scratch. Good morning! Here's what my kids are having for lunch. I'm making pasta with sausage and peppers. Here I have beef sausage and I'm just going to cut it into about a quarter inch thick on a bias. We're just going to cook this for a few minutes until they get a nice sear on both sides. And we're just going to remove from the skillet. I'm using um, red jalapeno garlic and all-purpose seasoning. A little bit of dried oregano, smoked paprika, some black pepper, and a pinch of salt. I'm just going to let this simmer for about five minutes or longer if you have the time. And now I'm just going to add the pasta and sausage back into the skillet. Add some grated parmesan, chopped parsley. A little bit of chili flakes will be perfect here. For something sweet, I'm gonna give them these peanut butter candy pieces. And that's it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. Bye! How many deadbeat single moms do you know that feed their kids processed foods? Don't even bother to cook the food in the oven, just microwave it. This is what most modern women cook who are married as well. Their career is more important to them than raising their own kids. What she cooked in the video is almost restaurant quality, and it's sad this used to be the norm 50 years ago, especially before the feminism cancer. If she has a son, she's going to measure every female he meets to his mom. He may never find the red pill or big towel, but he'll sure know by personal experience what a real wife or mom is. If she has a daughter or daughters, they'll have a great role model of what a wife and mother should be. They're not going to be shocked by the expectations like most modern women who are raised by deadbeat single moms are. You see, one of the reasons why females today, especially modern women and feminists, want a man to earn at least six figures is because they don't want to cook or clean. They want to live a five-star vacation lifestyle where they can brag and dunk on other bedwenches on social media that they're living a better life. So usually, I'm against women being on social media, and I've gone through great lengths explaining why. But in this case, females need to be influenced positively and see what a real mom and wife does to hold her end of the marriage up. I want to start this video by saying that I'm not asking for money and I'm not asking for sympathy. What I'm asking for is if you are a young 14, 16, 21-year-old girl, listen up. I drove to the grocery store, I need to grab some milk and bread and a couple things, flipped open the pink app on my phone, and I've been sitting in my car crying ever since because I never have enough money. And why do I never have enough money? Because when I was a 19-year-old girl, 
I fell in love. My Mormon faith told me that I was supposed to be a stay-at-home mom. I got married. I started having babies. I dropped out of college. I never had a career. My only jobs that I ever had in life were a waitress at the Olive Garden and managing a pretzel maker in a mall. Oh, my first couple years of marriage, I decided that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, so I bought a windshield business. I was 20. And my Mormon state president reminded me that women weren't supposed to work, so I quit my own business, handed it over to my husband, took my name off of it. I would work our family business throughout the next 24 years of my marriage, but I never got paid. I didn't have a salary. My name wasn't on it. I literally worked for room and board. That's it. I would eventually also launch a custom home building company with my uncle as the architect and my friends as the builder, my designs, my realtor. But again, because my husband was the man, um, his name was on all of the projects. His name was on the business. I remember one of the last custom homes that I built, we sold it and made about a $260,000 profit. That money all went into his bank account. I didn't even have a bank account. I should have said that in the beginning. I never had a bank account. He would give me little envelopes of cash to go grocery shopping with. Anyway, that house sells, the money goes in the bank. Um, I just asked if I could buy myself a piano with the money. I had worked on building that house for two years. All of the money went into his bank account. Nothing was under my name. I got a piano and I got a free house to live in and I got groceries. So I found myself divorced at age 44, just five years ago, and within just a few months, I was living in my car. While he made about a quarter million dollars, he would eventually quit that job so that he wouldn't have to pay alimony and child support. He has only paid alimony one time ever in the five years since we've been divorced, once ever. Right after my divorce, I remember being really confident about my ability to get a job, so I put together a resume. Um, I remember one of the first interviews that I had this management position for a windshield company, similar to the one that we had run. And the man actually laughing as he was interviewing me, like he was really sympathetic. He wasn't being a douchebag, but he was laughing. And he's like, so, so let me get this straight. You helped manage your family windshield business with your husband, but you were mostly a stay-at-home mom. And all you did was like the marketing and the hiring, firing, and some of the strategy for the business but it became really apparent that I needed so many more skills to have any type of management job. I couldn't even like work the basic computers. He told me in the interview, please don't apply for any more jobs like this. You are not qualified at all. You're not capable of doing this unless you go back to school and get your degree or get some different experience. And so I ended up, my first job after my divorce was $11 an hour, four hours a day, working as an assistant to a school teacher in an elementary school. I made $44 a day. For 24 years, I lived in million dollar homes. I vacationed all over the world. I spent my summers in Hawaii. I could buy myself $500 jeans, diamond tennis bracelets. We had boats and RVs and whatever I wanted. And it never bothered me once that my financial security was dependent on that man being in love with me. I never realized that him liking me or not liking me or finding me sexy or attractive or interesting determined whether or not my children could eat, whether or not I could buy myself a fucking jug of milk and a loaf of bread. So I had my fifth surgery in two years, two weeks ago, and I'm supposed to be in bed resting, and I can't because I worked seven days a week since my divorce five years ago, which is why I'm covered in paint and looking like crap. We actually have a four day weekend here in Tucson, and since my partner isn't working, he's working on furniture flip partner projects with me. I have no retirement, I have no savings, no education, no resume. I was almost a straight A student throughout all of my education. I went to college at age 17. I had dreams for my future. I'm working so hard to get myself out of just perpetual side hustle hell. There's not a day that goes by that I don't wonder why. Why I didn't have a fucking backup plan. Why my kids eating and having stability was dependent on a romantic relationship. Why nobody told me to put money in the bank? Why nobody told me, don't have babies until you have an education and some experience? Don't have so many kids. I wish somebody had told me to put my name on our vehicle loans and to put my name on our houses. 
I wish somebody had told me that it's okay to put those babies in daycare for a couple days a week and go to college and have a job. And I think I need to do an entire like trad wife sequel because you can be happy and rich and loving your life like ballerina farm until the guy walks out. I want you guys to imagine for a minute, even rich Hannah, if Deanna walked out, if all of his financial backing and he had to sell the farm and then what does she have? Find another rich boy to marry? I just don't want one more woman to DM me, comment, send me their stories, cry to me about how hard it is for them to support their families, and I am so tired of living my own story. We have to make this stop. Raise your daughters to be financially independent. Focus on their futures and educations just as much as you focus on your sons. I wish that someone had done that for me. Holy shit, this modern woman is clueless. She literally stated she never figured her marriage depended on her ex-husband liking her or finding her attractive. What's the point of marriage if you're with someone you don't like? You can't make this shit up. It sounds like she got lazy and out of shape. She effed around and found out. What she just said is like, if her ex decided to stop making money and become lazy on the couch, get fat and he expects her to still love him. Yet, she'd leave him in that scenario and be cheered on by these same women in the comments who are acting like her ex was in the wrong. The moral of the story is that she should have been more cooperative and focused more on making her ex-husband happy. Her job should have been working out in the gym and doing a bunch of cardio to stay as attractive as possible. Because he was doing his end of the deal. He's making six figures in profits per project. That's more than most people make per year. And it sounds like he was making multiple that per year. That's the type of earner 99% of women dream about. And the best part was, he was smart and protected himself. Dude needs to teach classes on how to avoid child support and alimony. Because god damn, if he did some creative accounting and dodged child support and alimony like Neo in the Matrix, otherwise she would have divorce robbed him and bragged on TikTok. Let's see the comments. Top comment with over 60,000 likes says, The real trad wife content I've been waiting for. No, she wasn't a trad wife. Otherwise, she'd still be married. She failed at being one. That's why she got the walking papers and kicked to the curb. Literally, she has to sleep in her car like a bum. If the gynocentric dictatorship didn't have divorce laws and child support, females in the West would be kept in line, and they'd be acting correctly. This is why getting married in a traditional country is the best option, because these foreign women know what it's like to live in poverty. So cooking three meals a day, which is maybe three hours of work at the most, is far easier and better than working a full eight-hour shift and dealing with the bills and the stress. Plus, they do it out of love, so it's not work. It's making the family happy and taken care of. This should be a lesson to modern women, but they're so delusional and selfish that they're using this as a validation to be so-called strong and independent. Another comment with over 50,000 likes says, A man is not a plan. Yes. Yet, these are the same females that will be crying in their late 30s, 40s, and 50s how they can't find a man and they want someone to give them the soft life. These bedwenches just want to be lazy and live a vacation lifestyle. Another comment with 20,000 likes asks, I raised my kids without support as well. Two jobs, seven days a week. Can I ask why you didn't get half when you divorced? And the deadbeat single mom in the video replied, I'm sorry, it's so hard. I'm willing to bet she regrets not going to the gym or being more pleasant because now she has to be pleasant and work a job for 8 hours a day, 5 days a week, 52 weeks in a year, and for over 20 years until she can collect her social security. That's if she can find a job that can support her. I'm willing to bet that her ex-husband gave her plenty of warning and raised concerns, but this bird brain did not listen because she knew she had divorce and child support as an ace up her sleeve. She probably thought he was bluffing and wouldn't divorce, thus she could be dead weight. But she was wrong. He prepared for war and won. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Whoever this chat is, I salute you. You dropped your crown, king. As always, I wish you tremendous success. Now it's your turn. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember that if you leave the best comment, you'll get five bucks. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, Hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, drop a comment, and share it. See you in the next video. Till next time.